Hi there, everybody. Welcome back. I wanted to uh, have sort of an unusual video here for you. So um, I know that I don't often talk about things that are sort of behind the scenes, but I think that it might be interesting to start talking about some of the ways that things are set up and a little bit of the idea that goes behind some of the things on this channel. What I really want to talk about is why I film NP3 games the way that I do and uh, sort of some of the thought that goes into that. So just so you know, I don't have a great way of showing you what my entire setup looks like, right? I have one, two, three lights. One of them's turned off. It's kind of an overcast day, but uh, you see if I turn this light on, I get kind of a weird glare from this side. So right now I'll have it off. Um, I'll show you one of the cameras here is right here. This one, as you can see, is face down. This is one of these, uh, what is the Logitech uh, 930? Uh, E, I believe, or C, something like that. What I'm looking at right now is also a Logitech 930E. I do have a webcam here on this um, iMac computer itself, which, as you may or may not know, is running Pop! OS. Um, but I'm not using it right now. I prefer to use the uh, higher quality HD webcam for a variety of reasons, one of which is that it actually works a lot better with Linux than this proprietary Apple thing. Um, so uh, a little bit of the thought that goes behind that. So one of the reasons why I have a secondary webcam is to show people how uh, the dice are rolled in this game. That's really why I wanted to talk with you about today. I, I go onto YouTube a lot. I see a lot of guys who have different uh, card and dice games that they try to play. And I know that you're trying to get some user engagement, um, viewer engagement that is, but it can be kind of hard to do. It's a little bit hard for us to be totally engaged with what you're doing, especially if you're keeping score by hand and I can't read your handwriting. And if you're using boards and I can't really see where the boards are and all this other stuff. Um, I was considering that when I was starting uh, to do this and I thought it would be nice to have sort of a board game to play alongside the um, entirely closed engine Diamond Mine Baseball. And um, I mean, you know me, I have a lot of ambition. There are a lot of other projects I'd really like to do. Um, so I'll show you a couple of things that I, why I've set this up the way that I have. So um, I'll tell you here, this is the um, NP3 window and uh, here I'll move um, our screen over to the side. I don't have my replay open. This is 1949. Right, and um, I have a whole bunch of MP3 seasons, so I can sort of change it that way. There are no spoilers for you. Um, the reason why I like playing MP3, in addition to the fact that it's a really good game, is because we have this great scoreboard where I can see a lot of things that are important to me, including the card of the batter. I can show you the next batter's card. I can go over here and look at, like, I don't know, a Catfish Metkovich's card there for the uh, White Sox, and this will come right up. And um, I can see some of the information up here, of course, some of the statistics and all that other stuff that we want to see. The reason, though, why this is important is for the user experience. So let me tell you something that I've learned in my couple of months on YouTube. Um, the big thing I've learned is that most of us who watch YouTube videos listen more than we watch. That's the way that I watch them, right? I got my iPad out. If I'm going to go do the dishes, I usually have the iPad set up and I'm watching a video, but I'm really listening to it. I'm not watching it that attentively, right? The same thing goes for these games. A lot of us are not really necessarily watching the screen. We're listening. That's one of the reasons why when you do it, you got to give some kind of play-by-play. -play, let us know what's happening because I don't know what's happening. I'm not going to look at the screen. I'm doing something else at the same time. I just want to hear your voice. That also, by the way, is the reason why it helps to get one of these babies, you know, one of these nice little uh, microphones that hit you over in the head. And the uh, reason why you want to sort of invest in this type of thing and uh, all of the stuff that goes along with this. I have a Go, uh, Go LXR Mini sitting down here and um, a couple of other uh, things hooked up. And yes, it does work on Linux. The reason why you want to invest in this is because you want people to hear you, right? One of the things I've noticed that it does not do any um, channel good is auditory problems and that's why it's good to have a very very good microphone setup i'm going to say this right now every single person regardless of what game you're playing every person who does um, these baseball simulator games and who does videos could use some improvement to the mic setup all of us could and um, i know what you're thinking oh, it's a lot of money or it's a lot of this it's a lot of that if you're serious about it and if you really want to do this as a hobby you want to make a lot of videos i recommend the investment I mean, it it makes a world of a difference, and it's a lot easier for people to listen to. Um, anyway, though, I did want, of course, to have some sort of visual aid, which is why I've set this up. And um, instead of, uh, so you can use the uh, dice rolls here on NP3 of the computer roll, the dice, and it'll roll it like that, see, and it figures it out automatically. But instead of having that, I kind of like to have this, right, so that I'm the one who's rolling it. It's my replay. I want to be in charge. I don't, I'm not going to let this computer do it. It's me, man. I'm in charge. And so that's the reason why I got this baby. And then we roll like that. And uh, the reason why I have this extra camera is so you can see that dice roll. Um, that way, it's not just me playing and telling you, oh, I did X, Y, Z. Instead, it's the two of us playing together, 
right? And then I roll the dice and I say, oh, look, the roll was, I don't know, 53. Or, okay, we're going to do the next batter. Oh, the roll was a 26, right? And I can tell you on the card, oh, here's what happened. Now, I've played APA in games like this, NP3 and so on, for a long time. I have most of the boards memorized. We could theoretically go through here and we can look at the boards. You can click on boards. We can look at whatever situation you want. You want. So this will tell you the uh, play result numbers um, for A, B, C, or D pitchers. Um, you can look at the rest of the boards and see exactly what happens. So I, I can't remember what situation it was we had um, the other day, but we had like, I don't know, runners on like maybe first and second or something like that. And we had some weird roll and you can see what happens fielding one, two or three. We're going to get a little bit, I think, deeper into this in the blog. We want to introduce a lot of this stuff slowly. If you haven't played APA or NP3 or whatever before, don't worry, we'll get to it. A lot of this stuff is really cool to know about. I'm going to be honest with you, though, it's going to be totally like jarring to go through this in part of a short video. All of this is in the background. However, I do kind of wish for your sake and for mine that we could from time to time like look at the boards and be like, oh, this could happen or that could happen, right? Oh, we could have fielding three and runners on first and second roll at 23. And the catcher gets ejected for the remainder of the game. That'd be pretty interesting, right? What would happen if that took place? And then, oh, well, what happens if we bunt and we have runners on first and second and uh, we roll a, a 23? Oh, if we bunt, then it's a double play for pitcher to third, third to first, right? I mean, it's interesting, right? There's all this different stuff that happens. What, we've, what if we hit and run with runners in first and third and we have a double, and we have a 23, then it's another double play. Uh, ground ball to third base to the catcher, then catcher to third to second to third um, to get the uh, runner um, who was on uh, first base out in a rundown. The batter goes to second, rare play. Anyway, pretty cool stuff, right? Um, and there's all sorts of this other stuff that's sort of hidden in there, but I'm going to be honest with you. When it comes to the game, we're just being a replayer. We want to play the game, and that's kind of what my focus is on. And that's the reason why I do this the way that I do. Um, I hope that you enjoy, though. I hope especially you enjoy having this setup here with this camera so that you can see the dice. This is the reason why when I call games now, unlike when I started, I'm going to make sure to call the roll and call the result and then tell you what happens with the board description, and we'll try to follow the game log as best as we can. I'll make mistakes. We all make mistakes, and uh, there you have it. Now, one more thing I wanted to show you. I'm going to switch this over to screen right now. I don't know what I have going on behind me, but uh, what you can see here is um, I am running this. I'm not going to show you the screen behind. I am running this as a virtual machine. So you can see right here that this is a virtual machine. I can go over here to my virtual machine preferences, and it shows that we're running VirtualBox. We are running Windows 10, but um, I am not running a Windows 10 computer, just in case you didn't believe me. So... There you have it. That's the way that we do it around these parts. And the reason why, just so you know, is that we are civilized around here. That is why we always use, uh, we use a, a program such as uh, VirtualBox and why we run Linux. Well, it's natural. We're civilized people. We're not, you know, some sort of ogre using Mac OS or Windows or any normal operating system. Man, we do it. We do it the civilized way and the intelligent way around these parts. Anyway, though, I hope you enjoyed that. That's some of my thoughts behind it. Let me know what you think, and um, I'll talk with you later. Take care. Bye-bye.